Yellowstone supervolcano and the prediction of a super eruption. A scientist has identified the Yellowstone clock of the caldera. Scientists made a prediction over the supervolcano after the system's clock was identified and they were using breakthrough in scientific analysis. Now the caldera site Yellowstone spreads over the northwest part of Wyoming and into Idaho and Montana, posing a significant threat in the event of a super eruption. The last such uh, super eruption occurred 640,000 years ago. This system is always monitored by USGS for any changes, deformation, and there have been many unsupported claims that it may be overdue for an eruption after the average time between each event was calculated. Thank you for your support. Please consider supporting my Patreon account since YouTube has again demonetized my channel. I upload at least five videos on my Patreon account every day and they are not the same videos that I have on my YouTube channel. I'll leave below the details in the description box. Thank you for your support. Yellowstone has had other eruptions, lava eruptions 70,000 years ago and another 80 eruptions since then, but this is having to do with super eruptions that could devastate the climate of the whole world. In a recent Discovery Channel titled Curiosity, series revealing how geochemist professor Kenneth Sims from the University of Wyoming, Wyoming studied the uh, Yellowstone supervolcano radiocarbon isotopes, and he did this to ascertain whether it was possible to make long-term predictions as to how often the super eruptions take place. He said there have been three major eruptions in the past as super eruptions. That's a hazard that we're facing in Yellowstone. He explains why scientists want to be able to, want to, be able to predict future Yellowstone future uh, super eruption. He said thousands of times more powerful than Mount St. Helens, an eruption on this type of scale would bury Western North America. He said a sulfur haze would dim the sun and plunge the entire world into a volcanic winter. There is a battery of equipment here monitoring ground deformation, gas emissions and earthquakes, he said. Now, let me remind you that one of the ways that the geologists found that there was a massive uh, magma uh, reservoir under the magma caldera of Yellowstone. It's under the Yellowstone Lake. The Yellowstone Lake is about uh, five, six o'clock uh, of the western, uh, of the eastern area of the caldera. The lake sits on top of the caldera. And uh, they found that there's a massive magma reservoir under the, the uh, chamber, magma chamber, because of the huge amounts of carbon dioxide that are emitted from Yellowstone. 45,000 tons of carbon dioxide emitted from Yellowstone every single day. And because they found this tremendous amount of carbon dioxide, 45,000 tons of gas emissions of carbon dioxide every day, daily, they, that's how they found that there's a huge magma reservoir under the magma chamber. Now, uh, there's equipment that they use to monitor ground deformation, gas emissions, and earthquakes, he said. He detailed how the USGS allows them to have a warning in the event of a super eruption, but ideally researchers would like to know more about all this kind of a, a super eruption way in advance. He said there are great for short-term predictions, but can science find a way to predict super eruptions long in advance? That was his question. Radon gas might, produce, but might prove as the answer, he said. Small amounts of gas escapes from active magma chambers. He explains that the radon decay, it forms radioactive isotopes with unique chemical signatures that scientists measure. And Sims explains how radioactive isotopes help to do that. He said that that's the hard aspect of science, that long-term prediction. He says, I can use the radon as a clock, and it helps me understand how fast the gas is rising from the magma deep down and coming up towards the surface. And he found that radon anomalies appear to be suited to forecast eruptive episodes. In his paper published in the Geological Society of London, he concluded that radon mapping is an effective tool in assessing diffuse 
and concentrated degassing at the surface. And uh, the study is, uh, uh, the team studied its use in uh, Vesuvius, the, vol vol the Vesuvius volcano of Italy, and the La Soufrière in Guadeloupe, and also Stromboli in Italy, and in Chile, the Viracicha volcano. And that's where they found faults in fracture systems control radon degassing. He also recently discovered evidence of two unknown colossal eruptions at Yellowstone using a combination of techniques, including radioactive isotope analysis. That the University of Leicester volcanologist Dr. Thomas Knott said, we discovered that deposits previously believed to belong to multiple smaller eruptions were in fact colossal sheets of volcanic material from two previously unknown super eruptions that took place 9 million years ago and 8.7 million years ago. And then the study shows that the Miocene period Yellowstone erupted on an average of 500,000 years instead of what we knew uh, previously every 700,000 years. So it erupts more often, every 500,000 years. But the study led scientists to predict that the power of Yellowstone is waning. Dr. Knott said, it therefore seems that Yellowstone hotspot has experienced a threefold decrease in its capacity to produce super-eruption events, and this is a very significant decline, he says. Okay, this is by Callum Hoare on Express UK. Please leave your comments. Thank you.